Master Heine here with another lesson for you today. Today we are going to focus on a choke from behind. Now, depending on your attacker's experience in the martial arts, they may kind of put on a few different chokes. For today, however, we are simply just going to go over kind of a rear naked, just straight up choke, meaning this person's holding on to it. They probably have some sort of wrist grab here or they're grabbing their own arm. And basically, a couple things are going to be happening when you're in this position. One, they're going to be squeezing everything as tight as they possibly can. And two, he's probably going to start leaning back, which means, oh, it's going to get real difficult for me to breathe. So whenever you get put into these situations, the first thing you have to do is, one, I have to get my hips heavy because I want to make sure that my weight is always going forward. As soon as I'm giving in and he's able to start stretching out my back, so if you think of like a bow, if he's able to start stretching out the frame of that bow, it's going to get nice and tight. Same here. If he starts stretching me out, this is going to become very tight as all the pressure starts falling onto my neck, which means, again, I'm losing my consciousness very quickly, and it's going to be very difficult for me to defend it from up here compared to if I'm hunched over. So first step, I drop my weight. Second step, both hands on the arms pulling. Do not expect, I don't care how strong you are, that you are going to be able to just rip this arm free. Go ahead, let go. That I'm going to be able to just rip this arm completely off. Even if I'm stronger than him, it is he is at an advantage here because he is behind me that he's able to keep a tight grip. So even if I'm stronger, he's going to be able to maintain this locked grip. Now, what I want to do is I keep this pressure on here just enough so that I'm able to get a few extra seconds of air in here, which means I have a few extra seconds to defend myself. So initially, two hands on the arm. I don't care if you grab up by the tricep and the forearm. If you're both up by the forearm or... You know, if you're both on the forearm or both on the tricep, if you're both on the elbow, or if you're kind of split, it doesn't matter. Just two hands on the choke, and I'm instantly pulling down. Again, keeping my elbows tight to my side because it makes it nice and tight. The same time that I'm doing this, I drop. Now, once I'm in this position, I'm somewhat of a crutch. So now everything on me is tight. It's a lot easier for me to start handling myself from this position. Meanwhile, he's going to continue to try and pull back, hopefully trying to get me to back up here, which means then that the next step is he's going to start stretching me out and squeezing. So... That's going to become the initial fight with us. Now, once I'm in this position, I've got this nice and tight, I can release one of the hands as long as I keep one hand in here. Even if I'm able to just keep my fingers in here, if he is able to get a tighter grip because my fingers are in the way, I am able to maintain my breathing a little bit. So keep that grip. As soon as one hand's free, that free hand is now going to come and start striking towards the groin, striking towards the abdomen, the thighs, whatever I'm able to hit over here. I do not, under any circumstances, when he's putting me in a choke, I do not want to turn away from him. If I start turning away, he's just going to continue to follow me, and we're just going to go in circles, and eventually this is going to get tighter again to the point where I can't breathe. So when you're in these positions, I want to make sure that I'm slowly starting to turn into him. Notice now that his elbow starts to get elevated. Eventually, I can start putting pressure on the elbow, which then relieves the pressure on the choke. At the same time, if for whatever reason we get to this position and he decides, okay, I don't have the choke, if anything, he's going to throw me into a headlock now. Well, if he throws me into a headlock, this is a lot easier position for me to get out of than a choke, and I'd much rather be here than in a choke in the first place, so I'll take this as a win. But let's get there first. So I grabbed, I dropped my weight, I'm going to shift my hips a little bit, because again, he's not controlling anything below the waist, he's only controlling my head and my shoulders. So once I get down here, I can easily, even if he's standing directly behind me, I can still shift my hips out to the side a little bit, I can start throwing heavy strikes down here to the groin, which again, is going to drastically loosen up his hands. I can start throwing hard elbows here to the gut, which again, loosens up the hands. All while this is going on, I'm continually trying to pull this arm free. So this is going to be continuous motion during this entire time that eventually is going to break that hand free. But as this is going on, I have to be constantly throwing strikes. I can throw stomps on the foot. I can throw stomps to the ankle. And again, I'm also turning my body towards him as much as possible. Now, if we get to this position, so turn a little bit. If we get to this position, at this point, the choke is pretty much off. He's not quite in a headlock, but I don't want him to put me in a headlock. From here, I can easily just stand straight up. But again, I'm going to stand up with power and posture and shoot my head straight up just for the case that his head is leaning over for whatever reason. I may catch him with a headbutt on the way up. Once I get into this position, now I know that he's in, not any, he's not in any good position to attack me from here. It's very easy for me now to just start throwing in strikes a little bit. I can grab him and start throwing in knees a little bit. You can throw elbows if you want to. And we completely disengage. So the idea with that choke is I need to apply the pressure on the choke to free it. I need to turn myself into him and I have to constantly strike. So if we're doing it full speed, he puts me in the choke, get real heavy, start throwing strikes here, turn, continue throwing strikes, break this hand free if I need to. Otherwise I come up, you throw strikes, strikes to the abdomen, kicks, and we disengage. So it's a very simple way 
to get out of it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. It's just a simple concept. But understand that as soon as I lose grip at any point during this, even if we're down here, for whatever reason, if I lose control of this choke, he's going to instantly crank back up. And by that point, I'm screwed. So you have to make sure that at all times, I have pressure on this. If at any point you lose control of this arm, I don't care what you're doing. One or both hands has to instantly come back if you lose control. And I have to maintain this again. For those who have not seen it yet, go back and watch the, the video on the importance of grip control and understand just how important it is to control grips at all times. But that's your simple way to get out of a choke. Keep that pressure. Keep your breath. Stay safe.